Hello everyone and welcome to another video on our YouTube channel. Hopefully you're doing great and you are ready for this one. In this video tutorial series we are going to be talking about Swagger. For those of you who do not know, a Swagger is a tool that allows you to create your uh, API documentation with ease. You just need a few clicks and you have it. So that documentation that you create, you can use it in a different variety of ways. One being, for example, if you have your backend and your frontend uh, separated and your frontend developers want to uh, have an easy way to know what exactly is the backend going to send to them. If they take a look at this API documentation created by Swagger, they would immediately know of it. Other example would be, for example, if you want to create automatically your frontend details. So you have your backend, you have your DTOs there, and you want to find a way to create your frontend DTOs. You could use the documentation created by Swagger to create that uh, DTOs and have them sent to frontend. So you would really do that with ease. Another example would also be if your application is being used by an external company. For example, you have your application, you have your API, and some other company is depending on that API to do something with it. I don't know, implement some additional part of your application. In order to uh, have it clearly stated what exactly your API is and how they can use it, you could use Swagger to generate the documentation that they can use. That's much easier than just uh, doing it some other way, I don't know, by, for example, manually, so to say, telling them what exactly you have and what they can do. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what we can do about it, uh, how we can start implementing. First thing that you uh, see here is the Swagger landing page. I will be linking this in the description. So you, here you can find all sorts of things uh, related to Swagger, of course, and what they offer. You can find the documentation, you can explore this page, you can yeah, take a look at it uh, if you're interested and it will really provide you some additional information about it. And yeah, for, uh, for us, we are not going to be taking a look at it now, so we are just going to start implementing. We are going to implement a basic Swagger um, integration, so we are going to just show how we can integrate it and we are going to show few things that you can uh, modify about the configuration of Swagger. So let's start, let's create our Spring project. I will be using the Spring Initializer web page as usual. So here you can see what I have. I'm going with the Gradle project in the language Java, of course, and with some settings here being set. I am choosing Java 15, but for you that doesn't matter. So you can choose any of these, whatever you have uh, on your PC. One thing that we of course need is the Spring web so that we are going to be able to create some um, uh, REST controllers, some DTOs and stuff like that. So um, this is what you need from the dependencies. So you can just click here and generate your project and import it in your IDE. I have it imported in IntelliJ, so I will be using IntelliJ to do this. So let's move to IntelliJ and see how our project looks like there. Here we have our project imported and ready to go. As you can see, we have the basic structure here. Our build Gradle file is here where our dependencies are. And you can see that we have our Spring Boot starter web here. First thing that we want to do is we want to add the dependency for Swagger. So let's do that. And with the Swagger dependency, we also want in addition to have the Swagger UI dependency. I will be showing the Swagger UI later on. And with the dependencies added, we can run the Gradle import. So to refresh the Gradle uh, files and have everything imported. Nice. Now with that being done, uh, we are going to move on to our Java code. As you can see in our Java folder, we have only our Swagger application. So the main application of this uh, Spring Boot project and nothing more. The next thing that we want to do, uh, Swagger related, is we want to create a configuration for it. So let's create it. Uh, let's create a new file called uh, Swagger configuration. As all configurations in a Spring project, we are going to annotate it with at configuration. This is just to tell the Spring that this is a configuration class. And now we have to add Swagger related configuration. Uh, I will just create a method and then we'll go through it and explain what it is. Mm -hmm. 
And here it is. So this is all of the configuration needed for Swagger. Uh, we create a new docket and the, our documentation type is Swagger2. If we jump to this class, you can see the explanation for it. So um, all of that's needed. So this is just a builder class for the Spring Framework that can be used. And uh, here you can see it and all of the nice things that it provides. You can uh, look to this and see what it has. And if we go back to our Swagger configuration here, we are telling it uh, which APIs to look at. Currently, we are just interested in all of them and also on which paths. The paths would be uh, your endpoints. So if you want to have something specific, for example, you have uh, so your application URL slash API. And if you're interested only on those URLs, you would um, whoops, you would add that here and it would just target those. And of course, we build it. So with this being done, we are basically um, done with Swagger configuration. We could start our application, but as you can see, it's really empty. We do not have anything. So let's create some DTOs in a different package and let's create some REST controls and then take a look at that. Here I have created a new package and I have created a user DTO inside of that package with a couple of properties. So it's just a normal Java class with three properties, uh, username, user age and email, also of type string, integer and string. And of course I've created getters and setters for all three of them. Now with that being done, let's create another package where we are going to place our REST controller. And here you can see that I have created a REST controller. So annotation at REST controller will tell Spring that this is a controller and request mapping is the endpoint on which this controller is accessible. Now let's create some methods inside of it. And here we have a couple of methods. Uh, let me just get rid of that uh, unused import. So we have uh, a get mapping where we are getting all of the users. So this method returns a list of users. We have a get mapping where we are fetching a user by ID. So we have a request parameter here, so it is a string and a named ID, and that should return us a user DTO. And we have a post mapping which is of type void so it doesn't return anything we call it save user and to this method we are passing the request body so which is our user dto so we are trying to save it okay now if we run our application we would like to see how the documentation looks like for the things that we have so we have our rest controller and we have one dto so let's uh, run our application and before we do that if you are using intellij you want to switch to the uh, to run your application with intellij so if you go file settings and then in the build and execution um, submenu you can search for Gradle actually. So inside of the submenu there are build tools, another submenu and there is Gradle there and you can choose this build and run using IntelliJ. So this is a setting that you can change, just click apply, click OK, okay and you are ready, you can start your application. So everything should be fine and we should be able to start it. So let's see how it goes. And looks like it's running. So you can see that the Tomcat has started on the port 8080 by default. And we can actually take a look at this and see if we can generate some documentation. So if I go here, you can see that I already have it set it up. So localhost 8080 slash v2, because we are using Swagger2, slash API docs. If I execute this, I get some JSON back and we can actually analyze it and go through it to see what we have. Here you can see that we are using Swagger 2.0. We have some info about it. We have our host, our base path, and there are some tags like basic error controller, and we have our user controller, so the one that we created. And in the paths, you can see the path that we have, slash API, slash users. We have some tags. We have a bunch of things, all of the responses, um, which we can have. And yeah, all of the endpoints that we created, like post, post endpoint, 
and uh, the one where we fetch the user by the ID, all of the nice stuff. And now you may think, okay, this is really nice, but it's not really readable. In that case, that's where the Swagger UI comes into play. So let's take a look at that. If we go to the Swagger UI HTML page, you can see the same thing as we had here, but just in this nice overview. And here we can actually take a look at our stuff. Let's take a look at the user controller. So this is our controller that we created. We have our endpoints. So we have the slash API slash users. We have, uh, so it's the Gantt mapping that we created created where we uh, get all users. So that's the name of the method. We have our save user method here where we are um, so on this endpoint and we have the get user by ID. And inside if we open this get user by ID, we can see that we have a parameter that we are passing in named ID and it's of type string. And we have all of the responses that we can get. So if everything goes okay, we'll get something like this. And this is our user DTO. So this is the DTO that we are returning when we are fetching by the ID. If you take a look at the list endpoint, you can see that here we return a list or an array in this case. And in the post mapping, it's uh, yeah void. And this is what you are going to pass to that method. So it's our DTO. And maybe you also notice that we have this models here. And here we have few stuff. We have this model in view and we have this view. And we have our user DTO, which we created. We have uh, all of the properties and the name of the DTO that we created and the types of these properties inside. But this uh, model in view, this is not something that we created. So this is a spring related thing, which we want to get rid of. And in the next video, we are going to take a look at how we can customize the configuration of Swagger to only target our stuff that we are interested in. And of course, we're going to get rid of also this basic error controller and the models that we don't want. And then we are going to take a look at uh, some annotations that Swagger provides, which enables us to even further extend this configuration. So stick with us and I will see you in the next video.